Hey everyone, welcome to In The Mix. In this video, we're going to cover Behringer's FCB 1010, which is a highly flexible MIDI foot controller. Even though the features on the interface are easily accessible, many users find the official programming instructions vague and somewhat daunting for beginners. Hopefully this video will help you fast track the learning curve. Let's get right into it. Behringer FCB 1010 is a relatively inexpensive portable MIDI foot controller that goes for about $150. The build quality is great and it's made to last for a long time. It weighs almost 8 pounds so it stays in place and doesn't move around easily. There's enough space between the pedals and foot switches on the controller which makes it feel comfortable in terms of foot positioning. This is a very popular pedal and has a dedicated Yahoo group of over 13,000 users. Make sure to check out this group as there's a lot of information and user tips available. This controller has a built-in power supply and comes with a power cable and a quick user guide. The PDF user manual can be downloaded from the official website. The FCB can be used with just about any MIDI capable software and hardware. For example, guitarists commonly use this as a stomp box for playing guitars through amp simulator software and hardware such as guitar rig and various Line 6 effect units. On the top panel there are 10 assignable preset buttons, a set of up-down stepper buttons, and two independent expression pedals. On the rear panel we have the power switch, and a pair of 5-pin MIDI in and out through jacks, so this is strictly a 5-pin MIDI device. There's also two programmable and relay controlled switch jacks that can be used to select channels on a guitar amp and such. All buttons on the top panel may have multiple functions and produce different results depending on the selected mode. For example, the up and down keys can be used as stepper buttons to cycle through different banks and menus, but in other modes, they can also be used to confirm a selection, cancel a selection, or exit the selected mode altogether. We'll talk more about this later. There are two ways for programming the FCB. We can use the physical buttons on the control panel to access the MIDI features. Generally, we would have to press a number of buttons in order to program a single function. This is a harder way to program the unit, but it's possible. There's also a third-party software editor available for Mac and PC which makes the programming experience far more easier. This free software can be downloaded from the Mountain Utilities website. There's no USB connection on this pedal, so there's no way of updating the firmware through running a software installer. This unit's firmware can only be upgraded by replacing the actual physical chip. You would need to remove a number of screws and open the bottom plate to replace the physical chip, which is pretty easy to do. There are also a number of unofficial add-on kits and firmware chips that add additional functionalities not available through the factory model. Uno and Eureka are the two most popular firmwares that offer newer or improved features. Just be aware that using a third-party EEPROM voids the warranty from Behringer. As of October 2017, the latest official FCB 1010 firmware from Behringer is 2.5.1, which costs about $10 plus shipping through Amazon. Even if you just bought a brand new FCB, it doesn't mean you have the most recent firmware revision. Older chips have various bugs and issues, so make sure you have version 2.3.12 or higher before trying to program the controller. The only way to tell is to remove the bottom plate and read the sticker number on the chip, so let's check it out. There's a total of 16 screws on the bottom plate that need to be removed. Don't worry about these three screws right here, as you do not have to remove them. Just remember the ones on the short sides are all long screws and the rest are short screws. Once you got all 16 screws out, carefully remove the cover. At this point, the only thing that is still attached to the bottom plate is the ground wire, so do not pull the cover too far. This is the EEPROM right here. Mine has the version 2.5, which is the latest update, so I won't have to update the firmware for now. If yours is an older version, I highly recommend that you upgrade the firmware. Pay attention to this half circle notch, so you'll be able to match the direction with the new EEPROM. You can use an IC tweezer or a screwdriver and get it in the tiny space between the bottom of the chip and the socket. Apply a bit of pressure and gently lever it up a bit at a time so one half won't get stuck in there. Eventually it'll come loose and you'll be able to remove it. 
To upgrade with the new EEPROM, line up the notch and pins with the holes on the socket on both sides and carefully push it down into place. Be extra careful not to bend the pins. It's recommended that you wear an anti-static wristband while doing all this. There are some YouTube videos that demonstrate the process very well. Now let's talk about the relationship between banks and presets. The FCB 1010 features a total of 100 presets that are organized in 10 banks numbered 0 to 9. Each individual bank contains 10 presets, so presets 1 to 10 are stored in bank 0, presets 11 to 20 in bank 1, presets 21 to 30 in bank 2, and so on. There are two methods for selecting banks and presets. The pedal's initial power on default setting is bank 0 with direct select set to off. In this mode, we can use the up-down buttons to step through the banks and then select one of the 10 presets within the selected bank. Here are some examples. Bank 0, preset 5. Bank 3, preset 2. Bank 8, preset 7. The second method is selecting the banks and presets with direct select set to on. Make sure the unit is powered off. Press and hold the down key and power on the unit. This will take you to the global configuration menu. As you can see, the green direct select LED lights up. Now we can press the 10 key which will activate direct select. Then press and hold the down key for a few seconds to exit or escape global configuration. So again, hold the down key and power on the unit. Press the 10 or direct select key and then hold the down key for a few seconds to exit the global mode. Now we can go ahead and select the bank followed by the preset. For example, this is bank 4, preset 5, or bank 9, preset 7, or bank 0, preset 3. With direct select activated, you no longer have to use the up down key to go to a bank first. A bank and preset can be directly selected by pressing two foot switches. Obviously, if you're programming multiple banks, you can speed up the workflow by activating the direct select mode. But if you're only working with one or two banks, there's no reason to go through the process of activating direct select. Both methods accomplish the same thing, so choose the one that works best for you. If direct select is activated, turning off the FCB will not restore the default setting. To disable direct select, you would need to follow the steps to go back to the global configuration menu. Turn off key 10 or direct select, exit global, and only then direct select is set to off again. This is the part where things might get a little confusing for many new FCB 1010 owners. When I looked at the pedal for the first time, I was under the impression that I can only assign program change messages to buttons 1 to 5, CC messages to buttons 6 and 7, and so on because of the MIDI functionality printed on each button. First of all, there is absolutely no difference between any of these foot switches as none of them are hardwired to be programmed in a certain way. Any function assigned to button 1 can also be assigned to 5 or 7 or 10. So regardless of what it reads on the switch when you're in normal performance mode, these are just flexible foot switches 1 through 10 and trigger whatever parameter that's assigned to them. The only time these smaller prints above each key mean something is if you're in a special editing mode such as global or preset configuration. Only then each key has a unique purpose and a different function depending on the selected mode. To enter the preset configuration or preset editing mode, select the preset that you would like to edit. Hold the down key for a few seconds, and that will take you to the preset editing mode for the selected key. The green LED for switches 1 and 2 will start flashing. This is the analog side of the preset configuration. These switches do not transmit any MIDI messages. They are relay switches that can be used to control external analog hardware such as guitar amps. While the green LED is flashing, you can use keys 1 and 2 to enable or disable them for the selected preset. Press the up button once and it will take you to select which is the MIDI section of the preset editing mode. In this page, switches 1 through 10 represent various MIDI functions which are printed at the very top of each key. The first five switches at the bottom row are assigned to program change messages 1 through 5, switches 6 and 7 to controller messages, 
switches 8 and 9 to CC messages for the expression pedals A and B, and switch 10 to a note message. So in preset editing mode, we can use these 10 keys to select up to 10 MIDI assignments for the selected preset. Right now, PC1 and EXP A and B are already enabled. This is just the default factory setting. It only means that out of the box, switch 4 is programmed to transmit one program change message and two CCs for the expression pedals. To enable or disable a MIDI function, just hold down the key until the red LED turns on or off. We can turn off the expression pedals altogether and assign only one PC message or select multiple program change messages. We can also select different combinations or select all 10 MIDI functions for the selected preset and send them all to one or more MIDI device simultaneously with one keystroke. To exit the preset configuration mode, hold the down key for a few seconds and you'll get back to the normal performance mode. This will also save the changes made to the preset. Most MIDI devices have a list in the user manual for the MIDI program change and control change values that are assigned to various parameters. To demonstrate the process, we'll be using the Korg PA4X, which is connected to the FCB through a 5-pin MIDI cable. Here you can see a unique program change number is assigned to certain features of the PA4X. We can use these PC messages to remotely trigger the features using an external controller such as the FCB1010. You would also need to take a few simple steps to prepare your MIDI device so it'll be able to receive the MIDI data from the controller. The FCB uses the 1 through 128 numbering system. Clearly, the PA4X uses the 0 through 127 numbering system, so we would need to add plus 1 to all these PC numbers to make up for the difference. If the numbering systems are not matched between the two devices, we won't be able to select the desired parameter. Right now, the FCB is set to transmit data on channel 1, which is the default setting, so we'll go ahead and use the same MIDI channel on the PA4X. If you decide to use a different MIDI channel on the FCB, you would have to match the same channel on the MIDI device. You would also need to check out the user manual to see if your MIDI device requires a special global setting for the MIDI in channel. The manual for the PA4X says you can remotely select the various style elements by sending program change messages on the control channel. So once we figured out which MIDI channel we're going to use with the FCB, we'll go ahead and set the global status for that MIDI channel to the control channel. Now that the MIDI device is configured to respond to the external controller, let's go ahead and program the presets on the FCB to trigger some of these features. Now that the MIDI device is properly configured to respond to the external controller, let's go ahead and program preset 1 to a PC message. Select preset 1 and hold down for a few seconds to enter the preset editing mode. Press up to go to the next page, which is Select. Keys 1, 8, and 9 are already selected. Again, this is just a factory default setting. You may have different MIDI functions enabled on your unit. For the time being, let's enable PC1 and turn off everything else that we don't need to make it less confusing. Now press the activated key once and the LED for that MIDI function will start blinking. Press the up key to go to the next page, which is Number. Now we can enter the program change value. Again, because the Korg PA4X is using the 0 through 127 numbering system, we'll have to adjust the numbers by plus 1 to match the FCB system. So enter 83 for intro 3. Press up to confirm the selection and the LED for PC1 will stop blinking. Press and hold down for a few seconds. Changes are saved and we're back to the normal performance mode. Now switch 1 is programmed to trigger intro 3 on the Korg PA4X. Let's go ahead and program another 4 style elements to buttons 2, 3, 9, and 10. We'll be repeating the same process, except we'll enter a different program change message.
So the process is pretty simple. Select a preset that you'd like to edit. In the preset editing mode, enter the PC number and then hold the down button to exit. Right now, the rest of the MIDI functions are disabled, so these five presets are only going to transmit one single PC message. This is useful in case if you wanted to dedicate a switch to a single parameter. Now we should be able to remotely control these five features using the buttons 1, 2, 3, 9, and 10. Let's check it out. Here's the front panel of the MIDI device. Intro 3, Variation 4, Fill 4, Ending 3, and Variation 1. So far we've assigned one PC message to each key. Each preset can also be programmed to transmit up to five PC messages at once. This time let's go ahead and program Bang 3 Preset 4 to trigger Variation 3, Style to Keyboard Set, Bass Inversion, Auto Fill, and Manual Bass. So that would be a total of five program change messages assigned to one single preset. Go to Bank 3 and select Preset 4. Hold down for a few seconds to enter the preset editing mode. Press up once and select the MIDI functions. We have five different parameters to assign, so we would need to select all PC 1 through 5 MIDI functions. Now we can activate the keys one by one and enter the PC assignments for each individual key. Because the Korg PA4X is using the 0 through 127 numbering system, we'll have to adjust the numbers by plus 1 to match the FCB system. Once all PC messages are entered, press and hold down to exit the preset editing mode. Now we can trigger all these five parameters using just one keystroke. There's an important factor to take into consideration when it comes to assigning multiple parameters to the same preset. You would need to carefully select the ones that your MIDI device can actually respond to simultaneously. For example, with the PA4X, you cannot select the physical buttons for Intro 1, Intro 2, and Intro 3 all at the same time. Only one of these three parameters can be activated at a time. If we send multiple PC messages for these three parameters in one keystroke, the PA4X will simply ignore them as it is not designed to perform more than one intro sequence at the same time. There are also features that may require more than just a single PC message. For example, selecting a Korg style or keyboard set requires a string of three MIDI messages, CC00 or MSB, CC32 or LSB, and a program change message. MSB and LSB pair is used to select a bank. Together with a program change message, they can be used to select an entry such as a sound or preset. Keys 6 and 7, or CNT 1 and 2, are reserved for control change messages, so we can use these two keys to program MSB and LSB. For programming the PC message after CC0 and CC32, we should always use PC5, because that's the only PC button that transmits data after CC0 and CC32. Let's go ahead and program Retrobeat, which is a Korg PA4X factory style to switch 4. Select the switch, Hold the down key for a few seconds to enter the preset editing mode and press up to select the MIDI functions. For programming Retrobeat, we need three keys or MIDI functions. Key 6 or CNT1, Key 7 or CNT2, and PC5. Let's select these three keys and disable everything else that we don't need. Now we need to program each key one by one. They don't have to be programmed in a particular order, but it's easier to just follow the chart. Let's start from CC00. Press 6 once to activate CNT1. 
Press up and enter the CC controller number 00. Press up to confirm. Enter the MSB bank value. Press up again to confirm and now the light for key 6 will stop blinking which means key 6 is programmed to CC00. Next is CC32. Press key 7 once. Press up and enter the controller number 32. Press up to confirm and enter the LSB bank value. Press up again to confirm. The last command is a program change message. Press PC5 once. Press up and enter the program change number, which is 28, but because the Korg PA4X uses the 0 through 127 numbering system, we would need to add plus 1 to the PC number to match the FCB numbering system. Press up to confirm, and then press and hold down for a few seconds to exit the preset editing mode. Now footswitch 4 is programmed to trigger the retro beat style. The next two buttons are switches 8 and 9. We can use these two buttons to assign continuous controller messages to the expression pedals A and B. There are 128 continuous controller messages available per MIDI channel. We can use these two pedals to control variable parameters on the MIDI devices such as keyboards, amps, effect units, and various virtual instruments and software sequencers. The process of programming the expression pedals is similar to PC messages. First you select the preset that you would like to edit and then activate the MIDI functions in the preset editing mode. The only difference is that continuous controllers have a minimum and maximum value ranging from 0 to 127. Then we can use the expression pedals A and B to send a continuous stream of values to a parameter within this range. Just like PC messages, the settings for the expression pedals are tied to individual presets. The assignments for the pedals A and B are not global, so every single preset can have its own independent expression settings. This means you can program the expression pedal A and B to control different parameters for various switches. If you want these two expression pedals to control the same parameter across all 10 presets, you would need to apply the same setting to all 10 foot switches. Here we have a MIDI track in Pro Tools. Let's go ahead and program the pedals A and B to control volume and mod wheel for this track. This would be an example for the expression pedal controlling basic common functions. The standard MIDI protocol for mod wheel and volume is CC1 and CC7. Select the switch that you'd like to program the pedal assignments for. Press and hold the down key to enter the preset editing mode. Press up and select MIDI functions expression A and B. Let's start with expression A. Press 8 once, press up to confirm the selection, enter the controller number 7 for volume, press up to confirm. Here we can use value 1 and 2 to set the minimum and maximum range for the controller which is between 0 and 127 or anything in between. If you would like the pedal to control the full range, enter 0 for value 1, press up to confirm, enter 127 for value 2. Press up to confirm and the light for key 8 will stop blinking. To program the second pedal, press 9 once, press up to confirm the selection, enter the controller number 1 for mod wheel, press up to confirm. This time let's set the minimum and maximum range between 50 and 100, so enter 50 for value 1. By the way you can also use pedal A to set the value as well. Press up to confirm. Enter 100 for value 2. Press up to confirm and the light for key 9 will stop blinking. Press and hold down for a few seconds to exit the preset editing mode. Now the expression pedals A and B are programmed to control common volume and mod wheel parameters for switch 1 only. Let's go ahead and record some volume and mod wheel automation. Here you can see pedal A controls the full range while pedal B sends controller values from 50 to 100, so it's controlling a much smaller range. There's a small problem here. Even though we had assigned the expression pedal A to 0 to 127, the MIDI controller values for volume didn't quite make it to the maximum range. This means the pedal did not accurately transmit a full range of controller values from 0 to 127. The way to fix this is to calibrate the expression pedals. 
Press and hold keys 1 and 3 while powering on the unit. This will put the FCB into self-test mode. Release the keys when the display goes completely blank. The LEDs on the board will turn on and off in sequence. Once all LEDs are on, depress all switches including up and down keys one at a time until all LEDs are turned off. Wait for a few seconds until the relay test is completed. You may hear a few quiet mechanical clicks. If the MIDI port is connected to a MIDI device, the display will quickly show A1 which means the MIDI port is functioning properly. Once the screen reads F1, it means we can go ahead and calibrate the pedals. Press down once, move the expression pedal A to the lowest value and press up. Then move the pedal to the highest value and press up again. Repeat the steps with the expression pedal B. Move it to the lowest value and press up. Then move the pedal to the highest value and press up again. At this point the FCB will go back to the normal mode. Now both pedals are calibrated. Let's do some volume automation to see if this solved the range issue. As you can see, the pedal is now able to send controller values 0 to 127. You only need to calibrate the pedals if they're not accurately transmitting the full range. The last MIDI function is Note. Let's program the Note function to switch 8. Select the switch, press and hold down, press up and activate key 10, which is the Note MIDI function. Press it once, press up to confirm the selection, and here you can enter the MIDI note number. 0 is the lowest, and 127 is the highest note. Let's enter 72 for the note C4. Press up to confirm the selection. Press and hold down to save and exit the preset editing mode. Now we can use switch 8 to send a C4 note message to a software or hardware MIDI device. Depending on the MIDI devices that you use, there are some useful applications for the note MIDI function. For example, note numbers can be assigned to a sample, loop, or sequence in a DAW such as Ableton, and can be remotely triggered with the FCB. Note on messages are also commonly used for tap tempo applications as well. We can also use the FCB to control functions that are specific to a particular MIDI device. This is Syntronic, which is a vintage synth virtual instrument by IK Multimedia. We can use the foot switches and expression pedals to remotely control various parameters of this instrument in real time. Here we have some user combination patches assigned to program change messages. Just like the PA4X keyboard, Syntronic uses the 0 through 127 numbering system, so we would need to add plus 1 to these PC messages on the FCB. Let's go ahead and trigger the piano patch by using Bank 2 Preset 4. Go to Bank 2, select Preset 4, press and hold down to enter the preset editing mode, select and activate the program change MIDI function, enter 2 for piano to match the numbering system between the FCB and Syntronic, press and hold down to exit. And now we can use preset 4 of bank 2 to trigger the piano combination patch in Syntronic. We can also use the MIDI Learn feature to pair up the expression pedals A and B with various instrument specific parameters. Just select and activate MIDI Learn for a parameter, move the expression pedal, and that should instantly pair up the two. Let's assign pedal A to master volume. And pedal B to pan. Pedal B controls a smaller range while pedal A controls a full range. To edit the range for a pedal, just go back to the preset editing mode, activate the desired pedal, edit the minimum and maximum range, And now pedal B can also control the pan setting from 0 to 127.
Now let's talk about the analog section of the preset editing mode. Aside from 10 MIDI functions, two relay switches 1 and 2 can also be assigned to a preset. These on-off switches are commonly used for controlling analog non-MIDI gears such as guitar amps. Connect the switch 1 and 2 outputs of the FCB to the foot switch input of your device using a standard mono or stereo quarter inch jack. Not all equipments respond to open close contacts or current feed, so you might want to check the user manual for your device. Let's program the switches for bank 1 preset 5. Select the switch and press and hold down to enter the preset editing mode. The green LED above switch 1 and 2 starts flashing. Right now both switches are disabled, which is the default setting. We can use keys 1 and 2 to activate one or both switches. At the moment, only switch 1 is connected to the guitar amp, so let's keep switch 1 enabled. If you want to program MIDI assignments, press up and that will take you to the MIDI programming section of the preset configuration. Press the down button once and it will take you back to switches 1 and 2. When you're done programming the preset, hold the down button for a few seconds which will save the edits and exit. Now the red LED for switch 1 lights up which means switch 1 is activated for preset 5. This is an Acoustasonic 30 Fender guitar amp and a plate reverb is selected for the mic input. Let's go ahead and plug in a microphone into the XLR mic input. Okay, now there's a huge reverb on my voice. If I select any other preset with switch 1 disabled, that will turn off the reverb for the mic. So now the signal is completely dry. Back to preset 5 and the reverb is on again. Obviously, this guitar amp also has an instrument input. The same way we can connect any of the two switches to this instrument input and then use the FCB to toggle instrument microphone effects on and off. The on-off function for switches 1 and 2 is not a global setting, so if you want to use that function in every preset, you would need to apply the setting to all 10 presets. The problem with the official stock chip is that you can use these presets in normal performance mode as latching switches for analog switch 1 and 2. For example, selecting preset 5 activates switch 1, but if you press the same preset again, it won't turn off the switch. This means two separate pedals are needed, one to switch on and one to switch off. If you want to have full control over analog switches 1 and 2, you can reserve two ghost presets for this purpose. For example, you can program presets 9 and 10 as dedicated on-off switches. Again, because this is not a global setting, you would need to apply this assignment for all 10 banks and presets. Since there are 10 presets available within each bank, this would be an acceptable workaround. There are additional options for switches 1 and 2 in the global configuration. Make sure the unit is turned off. Power on the FCB while holding the down key. Press the up button twice to go to the config page. Switches 1 and 2 are already enabled, which is the default setting. Press switch 1 once and the red LED shuts off. Press and hold down for a few seconds to save the setting and exit. Now the normal working mode for the switch is changed to momentary. Much like a keyboard sustain pedal, the switch engages while it's being depressed. So now the effect stays engaged for as long as you hold the switch down, but once you let off the switch it reverts back to off. The status of the switches can also be toggled with up as switch 1 and down as switch 2. Make sure the FCB is turned off. Power on the unit while pressing the down key. Press the 10 key to enable direct select. Then press up twice to go to the config page. Make sure switches 1 and 2 are enabled. Press and hold the down key for a few seconds to exit. When direct select is activated, the up down switches are no longer needed for bank and preset selection. Now they can be used as latching switches to control the relay switches 1 and 2 up control switch 1 and down control switch 2. Only in this mode we can use each key to toggle between the switch settings. MIDI channel assignment is a global function and it can only be done in the global mode. Hold the down key while powering up the unit. And that will take you to the direct select page which is the default selection when we enter the global configuration menu. Press up to go to the MIDI functionality page. The global MIDI channel setting is channel 1 for all MIDI functions. Here in this page we can select and assign different MIDI channels to various MIDI functions. 
All changes made to MIDI channels are global and apply to all 10 banks. This means a MIDI function cannot be assigned to more than one MIDI channel. For example, if we assign PC5 to MIDI channel 3, it's always going to transmit data on channel 3 across all 10 banks. For the sake of this video, let's go and assign PC4 to MIDI channel 9. Make sure the MIDI function page is selected. Press switch 4 to select PC4 and here you can see the current MIDI channel assigned to PC4. Press up to confirm the MIDI function selection and now you can enter the new MIDI channel number. Press up to confirm the change. At this point, if you want to change the MIDI channel for other MIDI functions, just press the up button a few times till you get back to the MIDI function page. Then select the MIDI function and repeat the process. Once you're done, just press and hold down for a few seconds to save and exit the global configuration mode. Just remember that you're only changing the MIDI channel for a specific MIDI function and not for a preset button. There are a number of reasons for why you might want to change the MIDI channel for a MIDI function. Sometimes a MIDI device has different parameters that may require completely different settings. Let's head back to the Korg PA4X real quick. The global MIDI in channel 1 is already taken for parameters that require the control setting. Obviously we can't share this channel with another parameter that requires a different setting. So in this case, we would need to assign the setting to a different unused channel. Let's go ahead and use the FCB to control the volume of the drum track. This requires one of the MIDI channels to be assigned to drum. Now the PA4X is expecting to receive data for the drum track on channel 2 only. In this case, we would need to assign one of the expression pedals to channel 2 as well so they can communicate with each other on the same channel. Keep and hold the down button pressed while powering on the unit. Press up once and select the MIDI function. We're going to use pedal A, so select switch 8, press up and enter 2 for the MIDI channel, press up to confirm and press and hold down for a few seconds to save the new MIDI channel for the expression pedal A and exit. Now select the preset that you would like to edit. Press and hold the down button to go to the preset editing mode. Press up and activate the MIDI function for the expression pedal A. Press up and enter 7, which is the standard MIDI CC value for volume. Press up to confirm the minimum and maximum range. And then press and hold the down button to save and exit. Now we can use the FCB to control the volume for the drum track. We can daisy chain two or more MIDI devices and use different MIDI channels to address specific devices in the chain. In this setup, there are two keyboards that are daisy chained to the only output port on the FCB. The MIDI out signal of the pedal is sent to the MIDI in of synth A. A copy of the same signal is also sent to synth B using the MIDI through to MIDI in connection. Each device can be assigned to receive on a separate MIDI channel. Then the FCB can be programmed to transmit on those channels to target each individual device. Let's go ahead and control the drum tracks for these two MIDI devices by using the expression pedals A and B. Both pedals will be assigned to the standard CC7 for volume, but we will program pedal A to transmit on channel 1 and pedal B on channel 2. Press and hold the down button while powering on the unit. Press up once and select switch 8 for the MIDI function EXPA. Press up and enter 1 for the MIDI channel. Press up to confirm. Now press the up button a few times to get back to the MIDI functionality page. Select switch 9 for the MIDI function EXPB. Press up and enter 2 for the MIDI channel. Press up to confirm. Press and hold down for a few seconds to save the MIDI channels for both pedals and exit. Now select the preset that you would like to edit. Press and hold the down button to go to the preset editing mode. Press up and activate the MIDI function for the expression pedal A. Press up and enter 7, which is the standard MIDI CC value for volume. Press up to confirm the minimum maximum range. Make sure pedal B is also set to trigger CC7 the same way. Press and hold the down button to save and exit. 
So here we have all three devices side by side. Expression pedals A and B are programmed to transmit CC7 on MIDI channels 1 and 2. MIDI configuration for synth A and B is slightly different. Synth A can only respond to expression pedal A, which is transmitting on channel 1. Synth B is set to receive all MIDI data generated from both pedals A and B. We don't have to worry about channels 3 to 16 because for this setup, the FCB is only transmitting on channels 1 and 2. With these settings, pedal A is controlling both synths because they're set to receive the MIDI data on channel 1. Synth A is set to off for channel 2, so pedal B can only control synth B as it's transmitting on MIDI channel 2. If you want to target a specific device in the daisy chain without triggering other instruments, you would need to assign each MIDI device to a specific MIDI channel. For example, here we can set synth A to channel 1 and synth B to channel 2. So now each instrument can be controlled separately. This is how you can daisy chain more MIDI devices and control their parameters using the FCB's foot switches and expression pedals on different MIDI channels. We can save the FCB's memory and create various backups for different MIDI setups using the system-exclusive messages. There are many softwares that you can use for sending and receiving sysx files for the purpose of backing up and loading presets. However, I strongly suggest that you download the FCB 1010 editor from the Mountain Utilities website. To demonstrate the process, let's go ahead and program three PC messages to switch three and then save and backup our preset programming to the computer. Select switch three, Press and hold down to enter the preset editing mode. Now let's activate and program PCs 1 through 3 one by one and assign a number to each. PC 1 to 80. PC 2 to 81. And PC 3 to 82. Press and hold down to exit the preset configuration mode. Make sure the MIDI out of the FCB is connected to the MIDI input of the software or MIDI recorder. We're using an M-Audio Uno MIDI USB converter cable to make the connection. Press and hold the down button for a few seconds while powering on the unit. Once you're in the global configuration mode, press up twice to go to the configuration page. Now let's launch the FCB 1010 Manager. Click on the MIDI tab and then go to the MIDI Devices Setup window to make sure the proper MIDI input and output is selected. Now press Switch 6 to dump the FCB data. When the red LED goes off, it means all SysX data have been transmitted which happens relatively fast. Then click Receive SysX and the editor starts receiving the data. Once the data is received, click Write SysX to save the backup file with a descriptive name. This is also how you can create a library of your favorite presets. To do a factory restore, turn off the FCB. Press and hold switches 1 and 6 while powering on the unit. The display will show 09 with flashing decimal points and then count down slowly to 00. This will restore the factory settings and you will lose your current program presets. Now we no longer have the three program changes that we had earlier assigned to switch three. We can also send a backup file from the computer to the unit. Make sure the MIDI out of the computer is connected to the MIDI in of the FCB. Press and hold the down button for a few seconds while powering on the unit. Once you're in the global configuration mode, press up twice to go to the configuration page. Press 7, which tells the FCB to wait for system-exclusive data and the red LED lights up. Then press Read SysX and locate the backup file. Then click Transmit SysX. The switch LED flashed and the FCB 1010 received the data. Once the LED dies out, it means the presets are back in FCB's memory. Now we can exit the global configuration. Just to be sure, let's go to the preset programming mode for switch 3.
Here we have PCs 1 through 3 that we had originally programmed for Switch 3. I strongly recommend that you guys use this editor for sending and receiving sysx files. Sometimes the FCB doesn't respond very well to other softwares. This editor is safe and works every time. I really hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we're going to have a closer look at the FCB 1010 editor from the Mountain Utilities website. More FCB and MIDI related videos will be added to this playlist, so feel free to subscribe and share your thoughts and comments down below. Also, we wanted to give our wonderful friend Nemec from Cork Forums a shout out for his valuable contribution. Thanks again for watching and see you next time!